And yes. He's telling us right now, when you call to me, I'm ready. I'm waiting because I know that the call is coming. Yes. And, and He knows the end from the beginning. And He said, when, I, when, when it comes, I'm going to give you a word. And that yes. word is going to be so profound, it's going to come to you in a way that you never had a dream that it would come like this. It's just didn't expect it to be yes. this way. Yes. But it's going to be the thing that is going to yes. empower you. I'm going to show you some stuff that you have no idea that I can yes. do. And I've been waiting for this yes. opportunity for just such a time as this yes. to release this part of me that no one has Hallelujah. ever experienced Woo. yet. Be it unto us, Just us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Things that you aren't ever going to be able to figure out on your own. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're going to know it was God in you that yes. made this happen. Yes. Because yes. you've been trying to figure it out yes. and have been unable to do it. Yes. Even with all the prayer and all the seeking yes. of me that you've done. And I appreciate that because I want to be one with you. I want yes. to be intimate with you. Yes. But I want to show you something you haven't even had the, the understanding oh. enough to ask yes. for yet. Yes. Yes. Praise yes. God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Ephesians yes. chapter 3, and let's read verses 19 through 21. Yes. Ephesians 3, 19 through 21. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto Him be glory in the yes. church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God has put in our hearts to want more of Him. Yes. Amen. We don't necessarily need a better theological understanding of the Lord. We don't need more teaching in that sense. I'm not saying that's wrong or it wouldn't be a good thing. I'm just saying that isn't what, really what this is all about. Praise the Lord. We need to experience the true yes. intimate presence of God yes. that will radically change our yes. lives in and of itself. Yes. Praise the Lord. Look at John chapter 14 and verse 21. John 14 and 21. Praise God. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. John 14, verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. My Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Yes. So in these scriptures, he's saying, in the Amplified, it reads, Those who keep his words... He will reveal, show, and manifest Himself to yes. them. Praise the Lord. Yes. God wants intimacy with us. Yes. He loves our presence. Yes. Amen. His priority is intimacy with His children, with yes. His people. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now the definition of intimacy is pertaining to the inmost character. Essential. Most private, personal, close, very familiar. That's what God yes. wants. Yes. He wants us to have that understanding of Him. Yes. He already has that understanding yes. of us. He wants us to know Him the way He knows us. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah, let's go back to Jeremiah 33, verse 3 again. Because everybody's saying, when that happens, when you call unto me in this intimacy, when you really begin to know me the way I know you, I'll answer you, and I'm going to show you yes. some great and mighty things that you know not. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. The byproduct, based on this right here, the byproduct of intimacy is empowerment. Yes. That's why the intimacy. Yes, he loves us, and yes, he wants his intimacy. And he, yes, he wants us to know him, but he wants us to know him so that we can be empowered yes. to do what only God can do. Yes. 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 Oh, man, I tell you. Yes. He, we, and he are one. 
But we really need to be one. We can't just keep this, you know, the religious idea that we, has been already presented this morning. That's part of what we're struggling and, and battling with. Because he's saying, if you can ever tap into this oneness with me, yes. that you are one with me, that you are accepted in the beloved, that there is no difference, then I can release power. You can begin to see the empowerment that has been given to you in Christ. Yes. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to plead for it. You don't have to hope that it'll come. It's there. You just got to start believing. You just got to start yes. knowing, yes. amen, what it is that you have in Christ. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. I want you to notice it's a choice that we make to enter into this intimacy. Yes. God will not force it on us. Look at uh, James chapter 4 and verse 8. James chapter 4 verse 8. Call unto me. Praise the Lord. Draw nigh to God. Get close. Get intimate with God. Yes. Yeah. And he'll get intimate with you. That's yep. right. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Right. He's thinking it's about me, it's about God, or whatever. But the truth is that really, it just narrows it down to this. Draw an eye to God, and he'll draw an eye to you. Focus. Yeah. I'm always saying that one of my grandsons especially, but all of them. Right? <laughs> one of them really, I mean, he just... He's everywhere, praise the Lord. He's like me. Hallelujah. He just has trouble getting focused, praise the Lord. That's why I'm always focused here, praise God. And that's what God is doing. Get focused. Yes. Amen. Make, get, make the priority the priority. Yes. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 9. And it gives us a little example here of what God is talking about when He says, Draw an eye to me, and I'll draw an eye to you. So it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of your spirit be on me. Amen. 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 Now we know Elijah had some power with God. Amen. And Elijah's saying, I want all that and more. Yeah. I want I want what I haven't even seen you do right. yet. I want to right. see God do things in me right. that I don't that I don't even have a consciousness of it. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So what did he do? He wouldn't let Elijah out of his sight. Well, Amen. He if Elijah went from Gilgal to Bethel, Elisha was right there. Yes. Yeah. If he went to Jericho or down to the Jordan River, Elisha was right close by. Yeah. Amen. He was unyielding in his pursuit, in other words. Yes. Amen. And he wanted that double portion. He was not going to give up. He was right. going to have that double yes. portion. Whatever it took, he was going to hang on him like, amen, yeah. like glue. Right. So what he was wasn't going to be separated from. Right. Amen. And so he was unyielding in this pursuit of this double portion for his life. He would not give up, in other words. Right. Now look at 2 Kings 2, 14 and 15. And we see the result of this focus. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and he smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Praise the Lord. Mm. So it was apparent to Elisha what God was doing. And it was apparent to everybody that was around Elisha what God had done. Amen. It's called manifestation. Yes. And it wasn't just that Elisha saw the manifestation or was aware of the manifestation. Everybody that could right. see was seeing yes. a manifestation. Praise right. the Lord. Amen. It impacted them. These are the same ones who said, you know, stay here. He's going. Just forget about it. I mean, if you read the entire story, they said, right. let him be. Go. Right. Let, him, let him alone. Amen. And that's what a lot of the church is saying. Let's just let God be God. And we'll, we'll try to get along here culturally so we don't have any more problems. And, and, there, and God is saying, no, if you'll just really focus on me yeah. and seek me yeah. and seek my will for your life and for yeah. this, yeah. this world, yes. amen, uh, there's going to be some manifestation yes. that's going to yeah. shut the mouths of the culture. Yeah. They're going to have to back up yeah. and say, whoa, wait a minute, that's God. Yeah. Yeah. Even the ones who don't yeah. believe in God are going to have to say, whoa, we're going to 
have to reevaluate some of this. Right. Right. Praise the Lord. Now, Genesis 32, uh, verse 26 through 28. And I'm telling you, God's messing with us. And, and I don't mean that in a you know, jolly way. I'm saying He's messing with us because He's got a plan and a yes. purpose for yes. this generation. Yes. We're going to have to rise up yes. and receive what it is He has for us. And that's what yes. that's the stirring of the Holy Ghost in us. Yes. We don't know what it is. We haven't been able to figure it out yet. All we know is something's going on and I'm part of it. Yes. Why am I part? Because God is part of it. Yes. God is the yes. part of it. Focus of all yes. Yes. in spite of what the devil's trying to make it about him. That's right. That's right. Amen. And he said, Let me go. This is Jacob. Remember, he's all freaked out about his brother's yes. gonna kill him because he's, you know, that took the the uh, inheritance, you know, the, the anointing from the father and so forth. And he said, Let me go for the daybreaker. And he said, I'm not letting you go. He's talking to the angel of the Lord. And, he's, and the angel said, let me go. It's daylight. i got to get out of here. i got things to do. And, and Jacob said, no way. No. Amen. I, you're going to have to kill me to get away from me because I'm not letting you go. Come on. Amen. I will not let you go except you bless me. Come on. Hallelujah. And he said unto him, what's your name? And he said, Jacob. Oh. Yeah. Amen. And he said, not anymore, did he? That's right. That's right. But Israel, yes. for as a prince, you have power with God yeah. and with men and have prevailed. Yes. Jacob was saying, I'm not stopping anything short of the fullest blessing of God. Yes. A life-changing, identity-changing yes. experience. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. So we catch up with the idea that we are this new creation. Yes. Amen. And God has given us a name that's written in heaven. Amen. That identifies us as the warriors that we really are in Christ. Yes. Who we really are in God. Yes. And He's trying to get that to us today yes. in this realm before we go into the eternal right. while we're still in the here and now and have eternity come in here and mess with this mess. Yeah. Right. Praise the Lord. So, Genesis 32, 30. And Jacob called the name of that place Peniel, because I've seen God face to face. We got in it. Yeah. And it changed me forever. Yeah. Yeah. It gave me a whole new identity. Amen. Oh. And my life is preserved. Yes. Yes. Thank, you, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. I want a life changing experience. I don't want to just go to heaven. All right? I'm grateful to be going to heaven, but that's already a done deal. I want something. Yes. I want something here and now that is going to identify me different than everybody else yes. or even outside of God. Because yes. that's what God wants. He wants to be manifest. He yes. wants to be revealed. Yes. He don't want to just be talked about as some religion yes. to be a part of. He wants to be known. Yes. That there can be no denial. Yes. Be found in Him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. That I may know Him, yes. that I might have intimacy with Him, yes. and the power of His resurrection to know yes. what is available, this yes. power that's in us. Yes. yes. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. We've talked about it a little bit, but all he's saying, I want I, I want to know righteousness through him. Yes. 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 Not mine, right. not, not this, because it's it's failing, it's it's yes. faulty. Yes. I want to know righteousness by yes. his description, yes. by his definition. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And death to myself, to this. Yes. yes. Resurrection life. Yes. yes. Power. Yes. Yes. I call me greedy, power. but I want to know the power. Yes. I want. To, I got to know the power. I have yes. to experience that power if I'm going to impact this yes. world the way He says yes. He's going to impact. Because He's got no other way to do it but us. Yes. Praise the Lord. I believe God's giving us another call. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Praise the Lord. Listen, I don't like getting up early and praying. And I'm this. Is, I'm not making this about me. I'm just. I'm just trying to be honest. But I don't sleep that good 
after about 3 o'clock in the morning anyway. And God knows it. <laughs> so he just said, as long as you're awake, yes. come talk for a while. Yes. Yep. And I'm telling you, I'm experiencing things that I haven't for years and years. I'm, I mean, from the very beginning when I yes. used to go out and knock yes. doors and hand out tracts yes. and get beer thrown Woo! in my face and <laughs> praise the Lord and threatened and everything else. I had the cops run us off when we were handing out tracts. KKK was right here. I'm telling on one side of Interstate 10, and we were on the other side. We're handing out tracts, and they're handing out hate. Yeah. And they were mad as. Yeah. yeah. And they called the cops. And the town was a town that had absolutely no blacks lived in it. They'd come and work during the daytime, but they would all leave by night. This is God's own truth. And the cops come and told us to leave. Wow. And we said, no, we ain't leaving. They're not leaving, so we're not leaving. Right. And then they came through with uh, boots, and we started, you know, they had like fireman yeah. boots. And uh, <laughs> they brought those down, they're just mocking and stuff. And we just started putting tracks in there. We had cars stopping on the, bike, on the road that bypassed Interstate 10 <laughs> and handing out tracks and stopping traffic. And I mean, we were, we were having a ball. We got <laughs> And he did. We saw people heal. We saw people deliver. Why? Because we didn't give a crap about yeah. their rules and how they operated and how they had operated. For, I, I'm happy to say that that town is integrated now. And this was in the 80s. This wasn't in 1960. This was in the 80s. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Jesus. The young man I worked with, he was a warehouse manager. And I was a salesman. I was on the road all the time. But I'd come back and talk to him, see what was going to be available and what wasn't. So I'm not selling stuff that I can't get for six months. And I was talking to him, there was going to be a football game in that town that night. Football's big in Texas. High school football is like college football in the United uh, North here. And uh, I said, you coming to the game tonight? He said, are you nuts? I said, why? He said, ain't no black man in his right mind going to be in that town after dark. And I didn't, see, I was naive. I'm a stupid kid from Iowa. And I said, man, what? are you serious? And he said, yeah. He said, everybody's not like you, Nate. No. I, I, had, I had valuable teaching that God gave me. Mm. God expects us to have guts. Yes. Yeah. He expects us to stand up yes. when it's right. I'm not saying everything that everybody does. I'm telling, I deal with people as people. Yeah. Right. Period. Right. Screw with me, I'll screw with you. Leave me alone and we're going to be good friends. We'll get along fine. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that's the most Christian way of doing things. But, you know, I'm trying to be... <laughs> you know, but I'm just being honest. But we saw what God really wanted there. He wanted people saved. But he didn't, he's not interested. What he hated was what we were hating. Right. And what the law just kind of thought, well, this is normal behavior here. We were the weirdos. Now when you look at the world today, it's exactly what God was showing us 40 yep. years ago. Yep. You're, you're living in a world full of nuts. Yes. Yeah. The only thing that makes any sense is God and, and right. Christianity. Right. And if you're not willing to go along with that, then climb on board with the crazies because that's where you're going to end up. <laughs> you're either going to stand for Him, and if you stand for Him, I, I promise you, we had, we, had, we, we had a guy come get killed in the church. And the ushers were good buddies of mine come and told me, there's a man who'd like to see you outside. So I went out not knowing that the guy was wanting to kill me. I just thought there's somebody out here that I'd witnessed to or whatever and I was going to have to come to church. No, he's wanting to kill me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not the meanest guy in the world. I can get mad, you know, I can get pretty feisty if I'm mad enough, but I just don't go looking for trouble. But I go out, and this is a, this again, this is God before God. This guy's standing there and he he's ready, you know, he's ready to go. I just started walking towards him, and I got about as far as I am from Sally right here, and he went just like this. Wow. And I said, what, what is going on? He said, you've been talking to my wife about the incestuous relationship that I've had with the daughter, and he remember the whole thing. And I said, yeah, that's true. 
He said, I don't want any more. He's on his knees looking like this. And I'm thinking, well, you know, this really isn't that threatening. No. How would like a, like you see a dog do to another dog, you know, when it knows that it's with, it'll just get down kind of get lower than the other dog. That's exactly what he did. Yeah. And I said, God loves you as much as he loves your wife and your daughter. But you've got to make a commitment. You can't you can't live the way you're living yeah. and expect God to you know, you know, keep this marriage together and, and watch over you and right. protect you and all these kind of things. Mm. I, I wish I could say he got saved, but he didn't. But he never came and threatened me again either. Right. And he left his wife alone and she was in the church and she got born again and received baptism in the Holy Spirit. Lord. Just a couple. I can tell you lots of stories. My pastor gave me every nutcase. I'm telling you, the past that. We had all of the incest, all of the gay, all the weird, I mean the bizarre, sickly kind of stuff. And that's what he'd send me. And I get out there not knowing what it is. I'm just thinking, well, somebody wants a Bible study. And I get there and find out Little girl, one girl, I, I ended up uh, giving them a, I didn't actually marry them, but I gave them the pre-marriage counseling. Her stepdad was a, was a, actually it was her uncle, was a uh, Cajun. I couldn't hardly understand, he talked, he talked to me, and I, I never could quite figure out what he was talking about. Refrigerator. Yeah. Thinking, ah, okay, here's something new. Anyway, he, he, he was a good guy. He just, he was Cajun. We're talking about Southeast Texas, right on the border of Louisiana. And anyway, he, his wife was the aunt to this young girl. This girl was like 18, and she was going to marry this goat roper. They called him a goat roper. He was kind of a cowboy, but not really a cowboy. He raised a sheep or something. They had to call him a goat roper. Real naive, couple, nice kids, but just naive as all get out. But she had serious problems. So we're talking at one of the this Bible studies we were having, and uh, she said, uh, "Well, you know," I said, well, "What? What is the difficulty? I mean, is it you got a problem with him? You don't love him, or, or what is it?" And she said, "It's it's men. They scare me." I said, oh, okay. Well, I talked to her aunt privately, and her aunt tells me that this little, this young girl's dad shot her mother in the head while her mother was holding her in her lap when she was about three or four years old. Oh, um, blew her mother's brains out. Her yeah. I guess she did have some problems with me. So I'm just saying, just a couple examples. This young guy, the goat rover. He knew nothing of God. I mean, he was totally ignorant of anything about God. We had him in a service, and they were calling for people to receive the Holy Spirit. And of course, their you know, the message is done. <laughs> repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you will receive the, or repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the pastor's making the altar call, and uh, I said, come to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I see he's over there, and he's white knuckled on the pew in front of him. I can tell him, you know, God's dealing with him. I know he is because I've been talking to him for a month or more. And I know he's, he's wanting to experience the Lord, but he doesn't know what to do. So I walked over there, and I said, come on, man. Let's go to the altar, you know. It's a gift. He said, uh, I can't be. I said, why? He said, I haven't been baptized. See, oh, he was so no. focused on the... This is how it's got to be done, because that's what they're saying. Repent, get baptized, then you get the Holy Ghost. I said, look, they're just talking. Yeah. It's a gift. God will give it to you right now. Right. It's just what he wants for you. He went down, and I'm telling you, he, he barely stopped walking, and he's talking in tongues. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yes. Praise the Lord. And they got married. Yes. As far as I know, they lived happily ever after. Yeah. Which would be unusual. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> I'm just saying I've seen God do miraculous things with stupid people. Yeah. Me yeah. had no idea. Sally went, went to the door. She said, "I think we got." We were out on the doors and we pray for people. I had guys throw beer bottles at me and throw beer in our face. Threatened us. One guy threatened me because and his wife uh, threw. 
snuff at me. She think she was a dipper, you know, they would dip. Yeah. I'm talking country, this is yeah. and uh, threw her her snuff or her spit bottle at me and oh. it was gross. Yeah. So we were and we were in outdoors one day and I was done. I mean I'm I'm saying let's, let's just wrap this up. I've got enough for today. So I said, no, I really think we need to go to this next place. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, she was with. There was another gal with you. I don't know if I was right. If I actually went with you to the house, but anyway, they went, and this woman is there, and I don't remember all the details, but she was dying with a terminal condition, and Sally prayed for her, and the woman got you. Woo! Wow, she does. She yes. prayed for my sister when she had cancer the first time, and the doctors were wanting to do chemo the second time around. And Sally just went over there and said, Dana, that's my sister. And she said, I feel like the Lord just wants me to pray. Now, my sister, was a, she loved God. She was a Baptist. She didn't believe in healing. But she had enough respect for us just to be polite, basically, because we were family. So let her pray for her. Sally prayed for her. The next day, she went to Iowa City for the test. No cancer. Yes. So Sally will tell you as quickly as anybody, we're, we had no training in this. We just yeah. believed because yeah. we were we experienced the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually just did stuff. Yeah. Believing that God was going to do stuff. Yes. Amen. Yes. Still does. Yes. And then because we were perfect by any means, but because God wants to manifest. He yes. wants to be seen. He's yes. looking for people. And we were just crazy enough to say, well, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Why not? But he's taking us back to that same place. That's what I'm saying. I, I've ex been experiencing a depth of this pull of God yeah. for the last several months, actually since back to Easter, that I haven't felt in years. I'm not saying I haven't loved the Lord. I'm just saying I've been just going through yeah. emotions for the most part. Come on. And God is saying, that ain't going to get it now. No, that's right. Oh, no. You were trained a certain way for a time yes. such as this. Yes. You may not have needed that for the last 40 years. But you're going to need it now. Yes. You're going to need it like you never yes. know. There it is. And that's where we're at. Yep. That's right. But I hope nobody thinks I'm bragging because I'm not. God, anybody that knew me back then knows I was in that case. I used to read water meters for the city and Sally actually had her job that I was doing it to help her and her and I would do it together and these people would see me and then on Sunday they'd say, man you need to, because uh, I was wearing a short sleeve shirt, it's 100 degrees and all the humidity in southeast Texas is a whole 100%. It's like it should be raining but it's not. Right. It's just raining on me. Yeah. Right. And I'm running through yards, you know, going to the next one with a <laughs> pot bottle that are put down on the meter because the meters are on the ground and they're always under water so the only way you can ever see what the meter is is you got to stick the bottle on it and then you can read it and then I'd holler to her and these people are seeing from church are seeing me run through they said man you know uh, you're out witnessing to people you shouldn't be wearing a short sleeve shirt oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm telling you yeah. I said well I wasn't uh, actually witnessing I was reading water meters <laughs> You know, but uh, if I had the opportunity to witness, I think they'd have probably accepted me yeah. with or without the long sleeves, you know. Yeah. Amen. Please. But I don't get it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but it just shows you God, God is, He can move yes. in or out of religion. And yes. if the heart is there, if there's somebody there that's hungry, if there's somebody there that wants Him, they're going to get Him. I don't yes. care where you are. People get healed. We had, a, there was an entire Baptist church, in fact, in Lumberton, Texas. They got received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they yeah. they were dead, yeah. dead against yeah. it. But there was a little prayer group, and these women had got together, and they were praying, and they saw it. And it was kind of like uh, you know the turn of the century down in Kansas. But they just said, "Hey, I think he still does this." And it wasn't within a matter of uh, maybe a month or a month and a half that entire church had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the pastor resigned. He <laughs> said, "We're not having it here." In fact, I can tell you right here in Des Moines, there's a church right up here where my mother-in-law, who's gone to be with the Lord now, uh, they, they had no, sec no, no teaching at all of the gifts of the Spirit. 
And there were several women there that received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, started speaking in tongues. Here's how they dealt with it. If you feel the urge, this is what the pastor told them, I'm telling you, he said, if you feel that urge, because they were, you know, the Spirit move on them and they'd hear a word from the Lord, and even though it wasn't, you know, dynamic necessarily, but it was still the word of the Lord, and they go, he there's this talking in tongues. And he said, okay, now I, I understand, you know, what's happening here, but he said that from now on, whenever you feel that urge, would you go to the basement? <laughs> okay, that's what he said. So that you don't. You know, disturb everybody else. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. have to move God here while we're at the church, right? <laughs> See, it's crazy everywhere. It isn't just, you know, we think we're nuts and, you know, that. No, it's nuts everywhere. Yeah. God's trying to do something. And He's been trying to do it for a long time. And now we're at a point where it's going to get done. It's just a question of who's going to do it. Who's going to participate? Who's going to be a part of it? Amen. So Philippians chapter 3, 9 and 10 again, we're not that wild right up here. We found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Yes. Praise the Lord. There's a greater hunger. A divine discontentment, a hunger and a thirst for what we really don't even know how to identify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet, it's here. It's, yes. We're feeling it. We're experiencing yeah. it. And it's not, this isn't just me. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm echoing what I'm hearing from everybody yeah. else in the church, yeah. quite honestly. Now, this might be a bad example, but it's the only one I can think of. Hopefully, you can relate to it. So, you go to the refrigerator, and your wife just, came from the grocery store and bought all the good stuff. It's stocked up, right? It's full of really good stuff to eat. So you look, you look, and if you're like me, you go back and look about every 10 minutes, even though you know everything that's in there, but you keep looking, thinking that someone might show up or, or something <laughs> will catch your attention or get you, you know? And so you're looking, and, and, and you look really good, and all this stuff looks good to eat, and you look, and you look, but you're still hungry for something that's not there. Mm. Yes. It's all good stuff. And, yes. and, and man, you know, normally you just think, oh, man, have some that or I'll have some. Just, but you keep looking and thinking, man, I just, I'm not hungry for something, but I can't, I can't figure out what it is. And I don't want to just eat something for the sake of eating it. Yeah. Right? I want to eat something that I really am hungry for. Right. Right. So it's the same kind of spiritual hunger that's in us today. Right, right. Our hearts, they're crying out for something more, for something yes. that I'm not right. seeing, something that I've not been getting on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, in this country especially, we've just been coasting. Yeah. Right. I mean, we had, obviously we all have battles and situations that we confront, but I'm talking about really life and death struggles. We're not a third world country. No. Right. You know, even the worst of times here are still the best of times right. for a lot of people. Right. You know, we're talking about inflation and all that stuff. Some of these people would love to have more inflation. Yeah. You know, just to have the opportunity to live in, in, in this nation. But, but now, faith hasn't been something that we had to have to, to survive. I mean, maybe you need it, you know, in a, in a instantaneous kind of situation or maybe for a period of time a loved one's dealing with a crisis or whatever it might be but then it lifts and whatever happens happens and we move on we don't have to live day to day by that faith we can have we got a little money we got a decent job you know the car's running the house payments are getting made and you know so I can do this I, I don't have to have God move miraculously every day of my life. But now, there's this discontent. Right. This dissatisfaction, if you will. Anymore. We're in a different situation. Yeah. Conditions are different. And because of those conditions, we're being forced into a different way of thinking. Yeah. A different way of responding. 
It's something that up to this point, it's escaped us. This need for God on this level, this, this need for power of, and anointing and Holy Spirit, it, 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 it hasn't been that tangibly real to us. It hasn't been something we've had to think about or really focus on. And now all of a sudden we're feeling this, yeah. we're going, hmm, yeah. how do we tap into this? Oh, how how is this going to work out? We can't put our finger on it, but it's, it's put us in this real dilemma into this transition. Look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. Matthew 12, 1 through 8. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was a hundred, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Anyway, there was, there was a special need here. There was something unusual going on, and he was doing stuff that they would have never dreamed of doing any time before this. Mm -hmm. But now, because of the circumstances, God's saying, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't what you thought it was. Jesus is trying to get this across to these religious leaders, right? Right. Or have you not read the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Why? Because they're working the whole time they're in there. Yeah. Yeah. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Bigger than your religion. Yeah. More than yes. what you figured out. But if you'd known what this means, I'll have mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Yes. Praise the Lord. Verse 6, he said, can you go back to verse 6? But I say to you that in this place is one greater than the temple. Yes. yes. In this place. See, we're not in a bad place. Actually, we're in a good place. Amen. We just don't realize it. Amen. Amen. God has brought us, or He's used our circumstances to reveal something to us and to bring us to this time of divine discontent. Yes. Yes. So there's a, a realm to behold. There's an experience beyond anything we have yet to experience and He wants us to know this ain't bad. Come on. It looks bad. It's only bad to those that don't understand it. For you, it's going to be a revelation. For you, it's going to be a manifestation of God of heart and things of God that you've never understood before. You're going to see how big I really am. And all the things that you thought were God, a lot of it was just religious stuff. I'm talking about the world in general, but us specifically. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 14. I know I'm all over the place this morning, but... That's because my mind is that way. And it's, I'm not random. I just talk faster than you can think. <laughs> oh my God, that art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret place of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Yes. Let me hear your voice. Yes. For sweet is thy voice. Yes. And thy countenance is comely. My dove, that are in the clefts of the rock. Yeah. This is God talking to his bride. Yes. Wow. I swear it is because Suzanne Pop. Ah. <laughs> she gave me this, this the tapes. <laughs> no, I, that's a long time ago before the story. But anyway. Yeah, exactly. By dub. Not in the clefts of the rock. In the secret places of the city. Let me see your confidence. Now I'm going to get close to you. Yeah. Is what God is saying. Gaze eye to eye. I, want this, I want this intimacy yes. that we're talking about. And you know what a set of stairs is made of? I'm going to give you some real carpentry skills. Here. Yeah. I know because I put some pavers down at the foot of ours on the deck. So I know a lot about stairs now. <laughs> <laughs> a set of stairs is made up of a riser, 
then a tread, followed by another riser, and another tread. Right? Everybody possibly knows that. But the riser is the part that lifts you to the next step. The place for your foot that's higher than where you are. Higher than the one you're standing on at the moment. Psalm 61, verse 2. He's saying, I want intimacy with you, and I want you to come up a little higher. Where you can relate to what I'm trying to share with you. That's God talking about. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to that rock that's higher than me. Yes. Lead me to Jesus. Yes. That cleft of the rock. Yes. Where Moses we're the bride yes. of Jesus. What we're experiencing is the end of the place that we've walked in, the place that we've understood. And it's because God is calling us to a place that's higher than where we've been, a place of greater intimacy with Him. Yes. The next step. Philip, Philippians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. If in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Yes. And actually Paul goes on then to say our conversations in heaven. Amen. <clears throat> but I'm going to give you this translation in verse 15. Keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than totality, God will clear, or God, God will clear your blurred vision. Yes. And you'll see it yet. And focus. And focus. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Mm -hmm. And chapter, or excuse me, verses 10 through 14. Now, I don't know I'm getting crazy. You don't have to believe in it. You can to. You can go, just go to the scriptures yourselves, check it out, and see. I'm just telling you what I believe God is saying to me through these scriptures. I think if you will. Question it, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But just go and look for yourself. Yeah. Amen. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Mm. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Yes. Which is the earnest of our inheritance. Until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Thank you, Jesus. So, what we've received is the earnest. Or literally, the down payment of our full inheritance yes. in yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. So, understand this. When we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with that, all the, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, prophecy, tongues, interpretation, all the other equipping, was only the guarantee that God had given the full disbursement of the inheritance purchased by our Lord Jesus Christ. When we got that, we got everything. We got a lot of stuff that we haven't even functioned. 
what we have experienced to the degree that we've experienced was simply the down payment. And it was the down payment of everything that we got in Christ. In other words, he gave us a whole bunch more than what we've experienced. What we've experienced was simply the earnest or the down payment of everything that we had received. I'm not saying that... That those things weren't valid, that those things aren't real, that those things aren't needful or weren't needful. Right? What I'm saying is there is so much more for us to receive and experience because of the total provision purchased for us yes. by Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. I'm not diminishing what has been. I'm not saying they cease. I'm not saying they're going away. But there is a glory that lies ahead of us. Yes. Yes. There's even greater manifestations. A dimension of God not known or ever seen yes. before. Glory, glory, yes. glory, yes. glory, glory. And intimacy. His inmost character. Yes. Mm -hmm. wow. yes. Depth of God that we haven't even known to see. Mm -hmm. God hasn't brought us to the end of one realm for us to die there. Mm -hmm. He's brought us to the end of this realm so that there will arise in our spirit a determination yes. to get everything. Yes. 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 Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Not as though I had already attained. This is Paul. Paul had some insights, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. And he said, not as though I had already got there. Now, come on, think about it. He's raising people from the dead. He's been killed a couple of times, stoned to death, lost in the sea. He's raising the dead. He's healing the sick. He's calling down fire. He's, he's, you know, miraculous stuff is happening all around this guy as a result of his faith. But he said, I haven't, I haven't even got there yet. Yeah. Yep. And most of us would say, just give me a little of that. I'll, I'll be happy with some of that. But he said, I, I, I haven't, uh, it's not as though I've already attained or got it all. Either we're already perfect or complete. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus. In other words, it's, he's got stuff for me to do, and i got to have Jesus to do it, and that's why Jesus gave me Jesus in the first place. So that's yes. why God gave him, right? Yes. Yes. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. With all that he's done, he's saying there's still way more here that I'm not, oh, I haven't Lord. tapped into. Oh, but this one thing I do, Forgetting what has been and reaching forth unto yes. those things which are yet to be. Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. I press toward the mark yes. for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Come I press higher. towards that Come up place Come up of higher. intimacy. Yes. yes. The next step. Come up higher. To Jesus. Yes. 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 So if you're sensing something powerful, yes. God has not left us to be satisfied with what has with a what has been in here. Yes. Right? Not a has been, but what has been. Right. Now you know, we are the temple of God. Yes. So here's one <clears throat> it's, it's so expected, I almost have. Get the scripture. But Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 1 through 5. Tammy and my youngest daughter brought this up the other day at the house. And, uh, because they were talking to one of our granddaughters <coughs> who had gone through some stuff and who God has really been dealing with. And, uh, and a daughter and law for that as well. How they have just God's revealed us and shown us. And one of the things they were talking about was this flood. She had a dream, not unlike the one that Jane had. It's a spirit. I'm not afraid to reuse some stuff if it'll work, you know. I mean, if it'll work. 
and she'd had a dream about the flood and so forth. And so I immediately I thought, is he? So I just was sharing with them what God had spoken to me, and then of course I couldn't get it out of my mind, so now you're going to get it too. <laughs> <laughs> Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under from the right side of the house out to the south side of the altar. This temple, right? Mm -hmm. And brought he me, we are the temple of God. And he brought me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me out of the way, without unto the other gate, by the way that looked eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, the waters were to the ankles. Yep. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Come on. And Jesus said, out of your belly yes. will flow, yes. out of your innermost yes. being will flow rivers yes. of every water. Out of this temple yes. will flow this river yes. of the Holy Ghost that yes. cannot be overcome. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. He was speaking prophetically of this time, I believe, yes, of this yes, last day. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's bringing us to full redemption. Come on. The fullness of the manifestation of God's kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. He's bringing us into a kingdom operation where we're going to see the king, his throne, his lordship. Amen. A realm of intimacy with him. That goes beyond anything that we've ever known. Come on. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. The Beatitudes. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Chapter 6. Or excuse me, verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Come on. It's a blessing to be hungry and thirsty for God. Yes. yes. <clears throat> Blessed when you're poor in spirit. He's not talking about, you know, bummed out and sad and depressed. He's simply saying, you're blessed. Would you recognize your acute need for more? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Exactly. Because it's when you're aware of it, you'll start seeking yes. it. Yes. Exactly. And when you start seeking it, you'll find it. Yes. Whatever you seek, you'll find it. Yes. yes. Draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. That's right. Amen. God's always, think about it, He always supplies the provision before the need for that provision appears. Right? He created the earth. He created the trees. He created the plants, the air, the sky, the sun, the moon, and all this stuff. He, he created the grass before He created the cow. Yes. Right. Yep. Amen? And through Jesus. So we've got this tremendous need now in this last day. But he had already given us Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. And through him we are endued with power from our high to overcome any circumstance, yes. any situation, mm -hmm. any age that we live in. Right. Luke 23 39. Right. Don was talking about the guard tomb. Cross. Here we go. Praise the Lord. One of the malefactors, this is Jesus on the cross, the two thieves are on either side of him, right? One of the thieves, one of the malefactors, which was hanged, railed on him, saying, If you're the Christ, save yourself from us. Yeah. That's the same voice yeah. that came to Jesus in the wilderness yes. during his temptation when Satan came to him, right? Yeah. right. Now notice. He was in a wilderness. Yeah. A wilderness is an unkept garden. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jesus picked up where Adam had fallen. Yeah. Yeah. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 3.
Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Verse 9. He leads him up to the temple, brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said, If you're the Son of God, cast yourself down from here. That's the same approach that the serpent used on Eve. On Eve. Mm -hmm. Yes. As God said, what's his word really say? Right. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. Should you believe it? Maybe there's something better. Maybe he's holding something back. Remember John 14? He said, uh, if you believe my words, I'll manifest. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. He would reveal himself or manifest himself to those who keep his words. Yep. And on the cross in the garden, Jesus spoiled principalities. Yes. He beat the enemy on his own turf. Right? Mm -hmm. And on that cross, Jesus said, it is finished. Yes. And it placed us in this finished work. Yes. Into a garden where all we have to do is tend the finished work. Yes. There's nothing we've got to do to get back to that place. All we have to do is live out of the life that he has already put in us. Amen. 2 Corinthians 11.3, we'll wrap up here. I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguile thee through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is yes. in Christ. It's not complicated. No. It's finished. It's finished. Mm -hmm. yes. This isn't the end of the church. It's the coming forth of the kingdom. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. The appearing of Christ in a people who will manifest the glory of God. Yes. Who will rule and reign standing fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Yes. Yes. To break in pieces and subdue every other king. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. We'll close Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Praise God. Call unto me. I'll answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things. Yes. Amen. Yes. I, I'm ready for some yes. new things. I'm ready for some exciting, yes. unexpected, yes. unknown, yes. no way I can manipulate it. Right. Just yep. slap me, silly. Yep. <laughs> Amen. Right? Yes. All good. You want to slap your mama, praise the Lord. <laughs> that good. Hallelujah. That's Woo. what he's going to give us. Hallelujah. So, God, let's just, yes. come on, I'm just saying, don't. Don't be deceived. Don't give in to the times. Don't give in to the chaos. Don't give in to the hate and the you know, the craziness that's going on. God has got a plan. Yes. And He's going to do it through us. Yes. He just needs us to get intimate, to get close, to step up, to come up to where He is. And, and we, we don't have to do anything other than to hunger for it, yes. to receive it. Yes. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be fed. Yes. He's going to give us him. He is the righteous one. Yep. And the receiving of him, all that he is to manifest in this yes. world. Amen. Amen. If that don't Amen. That won't mess with the devil, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> he's had his he's had his weapon once yeah. and nothing like what he's gonna get. Oh, that's right. And he knows it. That's why he's fighting and carrying on yeah, the way he, he is. Because he knows what's coming. Yeah. Yep. And bless God, I want to be part of it. In Jesus' name. And I do believe we will, or we wouldn't be feeling what we're feeling. Right. Right. Amen. 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 Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are more than confident. Amen. God bless you. All of you who want to come forward for prayer, for your family, for friends, for whatever you might have. EFC Dan's going to come up here and uh, they have some uh, prophetic words for you as well as uh, prayer.
Yes. Whatever you might have need of, come on up and God has got it for you. Maybe you just want to get a little closer to the Lord this morning. Whatever. It's all available in Jesus' name. Yes. Otherwise, you are dismissed to come and seek the Lord or go on with whatever you do. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen.